to talk more about uh, the markets with Jack Ablin, Crescent Capital CIO and founding partner. Jack, always good to see you, sir. Um, big picture, the cuts from OPEC Plus, what do it mean for the markets? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it probably uh, suggests that the headline is a little more um, uh, striking than actuality. I think uh, you alluded to the fact that there are a number of members that aren't meeting their current quotas. So the net effect of this two million uh, barrel drop is closer to five to seven hundred thousand barrels a day. Still, uh, we don't like to see production cuts, but it isn't as as stark as what the headlines would suggest. Jack, looking at the broader market action today, all three of the major averages under pressure once again. We started the week on a very upbeat note with the Dow rallying 1,500 points in just two days. But we have now seen two days of selling. Where do you think we go from here? Is there more downside risk ahead? There can be. I mean, you know, really, it's all about the 10-year Treasury and it's all about the dollar. Um, I think that uh, if you looked at just the the year-to-date performance of the S&P 500, it's virtually entirely explained by the move from uh, the 1.5% 10 year up to 375, uh, 380 uh, 10 year. So I think that explains virtually to the decimal point uh, the move in the S&P 500. Now, of course, we're watching the dollar because it really signals how investors uh, view the Fed. Once investors believe that there's light at the end of the tightening tunnel, we'll start to see the, uh, the, the dollar peak and then start to roll over. In that case, I think then it's probably an all clear signal for equity investing and probably foreign stocks, non-dollar denominated stocks will likely lead the way higher. But until that time, unfortunately, the 10 year treasury is really held hostage by the Fed. If they, do, if they believe that the markets rally too much and that the wealth effect could undermine their ability to fight inflation, guess what? They start selling treasury uh, notes and push that rate higher. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily banking on the rate yet. Uh, I think it's all about the Fed at the moment. And the Fed all about at the moment tomorrow's jobs report. What do you think they need to see to change the narrative? Sure. Unfortunately, the jobs report isn't really the big uh, the big data point anymore. Uh, it's taken a backseat to the inflation uh, data. But, um, you know, I'd like to see something that is consistent with what we saw with the, the um, job, the JOLTS report showing a million fewer job openings and then the higher claims uh, earlier today. If we see a jobs report that's consistent with that, perhaps lesser hiring, lower uh, hourly was, uh, uh, hours worked, and the hourly wages um, slipping, I think that's a good sign. But still, nothing's going to uh, underscore the inflation fight until the inflation data comes out next week. Jack, another big thing for the markets next week is going to be earnings season. Big banks are starting to report their results. We certainly have seen invest estimates revised lower. What are you expecting from third quarter earnings season? And I guess, what do you think it's going to tell us just about the strength or the weakness of the equity markets here in the fourth quarter? Yeah, so I think this is certainly not a great environment for banks. We're heading into a downturn. The curve is inverted, so there's really no opportunity necessarily for uh, net interest margin. We also have banks tightening their lending standards as they perhaps start to see some weakness among their borrowers. Uh, and then we've got um, a lot of the, um, the trading and uh, buyout activity uh, substantially lower. So there aren't too many levers for the banks right now. Um, the good news is, I suppose, bigger picture, their you know capital positions are a lot stronger. We generally don't make the same big mistake twice in a row, uh, although uh, we are watching some of the European banks to see you know how they, they're going to hold up in their stark economy moving into the, the next couple quarters. Yeah, it looks ugly ahead. And given all that, you favor high-quality companies who have grown their dividends over time. Do you have some examples of such? Sure. So, uh, again, there, you know, nothing really uh, too crazy, but Chevron, uh, great high-quality company uh, with a 3.8 or so percent dividend yield. This is a company that's been growing its dividend at 5.3% annually for the last five years, so that's pretty strong. 
We've got General Dynamics, also pretty nice uh, sweet spot of the, the market, 2.99% um, dividend yield, growing its dividend at 8.9% over the last five years. And then lastly, Archer Daniels Midland, ADM, 1.9% uh, dividend yield, growing its dividend at about 4.5% annually. So um, pretty you know, strong players in, in s sectors of the market that are somewhat insulated uh, from the vagaries of the economy right now. Uh, and, you know, we'll call it a no news is good news environment for these stocks. Jack, another big story, another big concern here for investors, really for multinational companies, has been the strong dollar. We had the U.S. dollar index back above 112 today. I guess how big of a risk do you see this being as we head into the final quarter of the year? Yeah, I, you know, I've never seen, I don't think the market has seen the dollar strengthen as strong uh, as much in a, such a short period of time. And so when you start looking at global economies and global markets, you know, that creates some dislocations that we don't know uh, is going to happen. So uh, part of the concern we have certainly is in emerging market debt, perhaps, particularly that segment of the emerging market debt market market that's denominated in U.S. dollars um, and, um, you know, other other economies, other central banks. So I think we see issues there. The good news is, though, fundamentally, uh, the dollar is very expensive relative to many of our trading partners' currencies. And so once we see, again, a peak in a Fed tightening and that peak in the dollar, my guess is the next opportunity for risk taking is going to be in non-dollar markets like the Japanese yen uh, or the EWJ, for example, uh, could be an interesting play. All right, Jack, Jack Ablin, always great to talk to you. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us today.